Denver Broncos wide receiver Tim Patrick is stepping up for the Broncos at OTAs without Cortland Sutton there. Who's following his lead? We'll break that down and much more here on today's brand new episode, Locked on Broncos. You are Locked on Broncos, your daily Denver Broncos podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Broncos country, what's up? Welcome into a brand new episode of Locked On Broncos, your daily Denver Broncos podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you so much to all the everydayers out there on Broncos country for tuning in, making us your first listen of the day every single day. Just a reminder, you can get Locked On Broncos for free on YouTube or wherever you get your podcast. So if you haven't done so already, make sure you do us a favor. Hit that subscribe or that follow button so you never miss out on what's going on with your favorite team every single day all year long, especially as OTAs week two continues to build up. I'm Cody Rourke, Broncos reporter for Mile High Sports. I cover the team in person in Dove Valley every single day and bring all the action, all the recap that I can't hear to all of you in Broncos country. Today's episode of the show is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. And right now, new customers can get 150 bucks in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's 150 bucks with any winning $5 bet. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. Really what we're going to break down here on today's episode of the podcast, really taking a look at what's the vibe on the Broncos roster at practice after attending last week. Is there going to be depth added to the tight end or the inside linebacker position? But more importantly, we're going to kick things off by talking about Tim Patrick leading the way here for the Broncos wide receiver room without Cortland Sutton at OTAs. And that's where we're going to really kind of begin our conversation on today's show. And look, Broncos country, it's great seeing Tim Patrick back, just watching him move, watching him run, you know, the route tree in an in individual period and also just running on routes on air, getting, you know, passes thrown to him by Bo Nix, by Jared Stidham, by Zach Wilson. Getting reps in that regard is something that you want to see. And I think just watching it as well, like Tim, you can just tell he's still getting acclimated to being out there on the field, running around, doing a lot of stuff. Now, at the end of last season, we saw Tim Patrick on the side field running sprints, cutting, doing a lot of those, you know, start, stop drills, deceleration, just so you can get back in the tune of it. And obviously he's had his off season where he's been training. He's been putting in a lot of work, but one of the things I just want to continue to monitor, and I want to emphasize here to Broncos country as well. The team is still easing Tim into things. Like you didn't see a lot of involvement really at all in team drills, at least in Thursday's practice to what we got, you know, to see. And I think that's the downside of us not being able to attend all three days of OTA practices as media. We're only allowed one right now. Now, when mandatory minicamp comes around June 11th through the 13th, we are mandated to be there for three days. Like we have access to it. We don't necessarily get the choice. We only get access to one practice per week of OTAs as it stands right now, unless Sean were to say otherwise. But for Tim, we don't know if he did much on when on Tuesday and Wednesday before we are able to see Thursday's practice. Kind of same thing is going to apply this week. More than likely, we're only going to be able to see Thursday's practice. So what's he doing on Tuesday? What's he doing on Wednesday? Who has a vet day off? Who's not doing anything? Like We don't have a, you know any information on that. We don't get access to that. So that is a little bit of a challenge. But I will say, Sean Payton, Bo Lowry, they're being very mindful of the reps that they're handing out to guys who are coming off of injuries last year, as we noted Greg Dulcich last week working on the side field. Tim Patrick coming off the major injury. They're going to be smart with him, not only in OTAs, not only in minicamp, but they're going to be smart with him in training camp. And, and I also maybe want to go to the point, we may see him play a series or two in one of the preseason games coming up, obviously, in the month of August. But I would not expect to see Patrick do a lot throughout this entire summer. I think that the goal is to get him into the regular season get him as healthy as he can be and just ease him in because you got to think of it from an athlete standpoint, like, well, Tim has had time to recover and he's not even at the year mark since he tore his Achilles. It's approaching in July. But the thing with Tim is that you also still have to get over to the point where you're going to have the mental side. Like I know just the, the psychology of an athlete when you're coming off of a major injury and you're doing it, you know, and you're trying to be mindful of how you're planting, how you're cutting, like those things factor into your mind when you're running your route. Or like for me, like when I tore my ACL and I tried to come back, I was always, thinking about my back pedal. Am am I getting too wide? Like when I flip my hips, what type of force am I putting in the ground? Am I planting hill first? Am I planting with my, my toe first? Like those are a lot of different things that I would think about. So there's the psychology athlete. And I want to encourage Broncos fans, like even if Tim Patrick struggles a little bit or looks rusty, let it come back to him. It's going to take some time. We all know when Tim is healthy, when he's fully himself, 
He's a productive playmaker. He makes things happen for the Broncos offense, and he's going to be a guy that I think is going to be relied heavily upon this season. Now, look, after practice last week, I had a chance to ask Sean Payton. I asked him, you know, how is Tim look since, you know, coming off the major injury last year, you had big plans for him inside of your offense. What has he looked like coming back on the field and getting reincorporated into the grind? And, and he's, you know, what Sean Payton had told me, he said, look, he's smart. He's tough. He's doing a really good job and he's leading that room. And, and look, I think that's a good thing right now without Cortland Sutton. Look, you want to have court back in the mix. I have a feeling and a belief that Cortland will be back here soon for the Broncos. And then they'll get that thing worked out between, you know, what's going on with them, the ongoing tug of war about a contract dispute. I think you're going to see Cortland Sutton get some money here soon. But on top of that, you need a guy like Tim Patrick, a guy who's been really a coach behind the scenes for this wide receiver room for the last two seasons. And now you have a bunch of new faces in there. So not only is Tim Patrick stepping up and leading that room, Sean Payton has acknowledged that. But, you know, you look at the other guys like little Jordan Humphrey, just from my observation, it looked like he was a little bit leaner and a little bit more explosive when running routes on air, catching passes. That's a nice sight to see from him. Jalen Virgil looks like he's got a little bit more muscle. He looks a little bit thicker in the, in the quads and the calf area. That's a good sign for him. I, I, and his explosiveness is still there coming off the meniscus injury. He looked pretty solid. Josh Reynolds, as we talked about following practice last week, looked like a very all-around player. Probably outside of Lucas Kroll had the most productive day during last Thursday's practice, catching passes from a multitude of Broncos quarterbacks. As that competition is ongoing, I like Josh Reynolds' ability to adjust his body to different angles in terms of catching, whether it's like adjusting to a pass thrown behind him or if it's low, like he's understanding where to go. He knows how to protect himself in those situations, especially there was one play where, you know, you had to throw the ball low because you have a linebacker closing in, you have a safety coming up, and you just have to get it to a spot, right? And so he knows how to catch the ball, secure it, and also protect himself and roll to be able to like you know, pick up a first down, get tagged by a defender at that point. You, you notice that his experience factor is definitely playing in there. He can be a big play wide receiving option here for the Broncos. I'm excited to see a little bit more of Josh Reynolds. But I think overall, when you look at this Broncos wide receiver room, especially with everything led right now by Tim Patrick, I just think that there's good competition across the board. And look, there's a lot of unknowns about this Broncos roster. There's some talented playmakers, like including Brandon Johnson. Brandon looks very focused, you know, during Thursday's practice, was catching everything that I saw thrown his way as well. I think that wide receiver room is going to have a lot of competition. I think it's going to take some time too. Like you want to give it time because if you're having these guys push each other, you want to see who emerges a little bit, which is why I think there's a little bit more pressure now on Cortland Sutton to return as quick as he can. Now when he does, he's obviously going to be the team's number one wide receiver. We're not even discounting Marvin Mims. Like Marvin, Tim, Cortland, those are the top three guys. Right now, you've got Josh Reynolds, you got Troy Franklin, Devon Vele, you've got little Jordan Humphrey, Brandon Johnson, Jalen Virgil. You got all these other guys in the mix, and I think it's going to make it exciting. And I'll, another storyline I'm very excited to see too is like how the new kickoff rules and the return rules impact what positions the Broncos carry more guys at. They could carry more wide receivers strictly from the fact like if they got a big body guy like little Jordan Humphrey, they might have him be a blocker on kickoff. They might have him be a setup guy in terms of kickoff return, like. You can be very diverse with your personnel looks now with the new rules that have changed to impact special teams. I am very, very curious to see how that boils down. But right now, I like where the Broncos wide receiver room is at. I'll love it even more when Cortland Sutton comes back. But who's going to step up and emerge? Who's going to take the biggest leap from a developmental standpoint? These are things that we're watching here all throughout OTAs. But obviously, a recap of week one in the books. Tim Patrick leading that group and will continue to lead that group in the meantime but we also have some questions will there be some depth added to the inside linebacker or tight end position i'm going to tell you why i think the broncos are going to stand pat here on today's brand new episode locked on broncos broncos country today's episode locked on broncos is brought to you by our friends over there at FanDuel sportsbook and as you know it FanDuel is america's number one sportsbook and right now it is winner take all time in the nba and the NHL and FanDuel, they're giving you a shot to bring home a big win of your own. For the NBA Western Conference, Eastern Conference Finals, you got the NHL on the ice as everyone's looking for the Stanley Cup and everyone's looking toward the NBA Finals. FanDuel is a great place to get in on the action right now because right now, new customers, they get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. So if you sign up today as a brand new customer, you go on and you place a $5 bet on any of the games that are ongoing 
whether you, you do stat lines, money lines, player props, whatever you want to put $5 on. If that bet wins, you're automatically going to be rewarded with $150 in bonus bets if you are a new customer and you sign up here today. So make sure you visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and make every playoff shot counts. Once again, that's FanDuel.com slash locked on FanDuel, America's number one sports book. As we jump into the second half action on today's episode, Lockdown Broncos, I want to say thank you so much once again to everybody in Broncos country for tuning in and making us your first listen of the day every single day. We appreciate all you everydayers out there in Broncos country. You make the show exactly what it is. And look, a lot of people are switching gears from the national perspective to the local perspective because when they tr turn on the national shows, they want to hear about their team being talked about. You never get it here. You usually get it here. Three big markets talked about while your team, if they're doing well, the coverage on them seeps to the bottom there. Well, if you're watching Fox Sports or ESPN on your TV all day, I got to ask you a question. What are you doing? You have to turn the volume down with all that shouting that these talking heads do and make the switch today to Locked On Sports Today. It's a free 24-7 streaming channel program for you every day to bring you the biggest stories without all the screaming. Locked On Sports Today brings you can't-miss analysis, opinions, and news streaming 24-7 on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app. It's part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team Every day. Now we got a question into a mailbag. Wes Choate, an avid listener of the show, sent in this question asking if the Broncos, do you think that they're going to look to add depth to the inside linebacker or the tight end position here this offseason throughout training camp? And while you will see some personnel moves from time to time, look, you got to factor in it and knock on wood. Hopefully, this isn't the case. Hopefully, the Broncos and all these other teams in the NFL during mini camp. Then when they're on the field doing stuff on air, hopefully guys don't get hurt, right? You always want to hope that guys can come into training camp fully healthy, and you want to make sure you don't get any injuries during training camp, but you know the unfortunate nature of this game. Some of those things are going to pop up. Now, I think when you look at positions where you really can't afford to have that pop up right now, I think this is maybe where Wes's question kind of makes a valid point. Like, should the Broncos add to the inside linebacker position or tight end I think in those instances, you have to have a contingency plan. But right now, I don't think that the Denver Broncos need to go out and they need to do that right now. And here, let me tell you why. Let's first off take a look at the inside linebacker position. I wrote a story for Mile High Sports last week saying it will be very tough. It's going to be a tough task to replace Josie Jewell, who's been a mainstay at that position for the last handful of years since 2018. How is Denver going to adjust going forward? Because now you have Alex Singleton. He's your lone starter inside linebacker that's returning. So, what does that rotation look like? Who's going to emerge and who's going to start at the inside backer position right next to him? And look, I think you look at the depth right now. You look at the names that are there. There's Jonas Griffith. There's obviously Justin Sternod. There's Lavelle Bailey and obviously offseason acquisition Cody Barton. There's Alec Mock, who's obviously an undrafted rookie for agent out of Air Force. Right now, I think that Broncos fans need to keep their eye on Alex Singleton and Jonas Griffith as the potential starting linebacking unit here for the Broncos. They have starting experience together. I think back in the season opener against the Seattle Seahawks just about two years ago, Josie was out with an injury. You had Jonas and you had Alex start that game. Jonas, I think, will be a little bit more of that proverbial Mike linebacker. And I think you're going to see Alex play a little bit more of that will. And look, and I feel like their roles are going to be interchangeable as well. Like Jonas is athletic enough, as we've seen. He's probably got the most freakish body composition of anybody on this entire roster. Like I'm telling you, if you ever see Jonas Griffith at, at training camp, just keep an eye. Dude's got the most lean muscles in terms of his shoulders, his arms, his legs, his chest, his abdomen. Like this dude is like an Adonis DNA. Like he is a freak of nature. And for him coming off the ACL injury, you have to wonder, okay, what is that going to look like? We know that medical technology has advanced. Recovery techniques have advanced so far in terms of ACL and Achilles recoveries. But you still always have to wonder the psychological side of it coming off of an injury like that is how does it impact the way that you, you move? Now, I can tell you this, watching last week at practice, watching Jonas Griffith and Alex Singleton together, you could definitely tell they play off each other a little bit. I think they got a little bit more chemistry than I think Alex and any of the other guys playing linebacker next to him at that point. But Jonas looks good. He looks still athletic. He looks long. And I think the one thing you want to see as well is like, okay, when the pads come on, how is it like, how is your reaction? What's your reads and looks like when you have a guard, you have linemen coming up to double team you? To me, that's one thing I want to see. You're not going to see that during OTA. So right now it's really hard for us to evaluate in a lens just the impact and the value that we're seeing right now in terms of how linebackers, how safeties are playing, 
right now during OTA practices when they go through the team periods and obviously the competitive battles that they have there. But right now, I'd say Broncos country, keep an eye on Jonas Griffith at that position at linebacker right next to Alex Singleton. And look, you're seeing a lot of rotating in in terms of you know the linebacker spot. Some with the first team, some with the you know second and third team units. You're seeing a combination of Cody Barton, who the team signed in free agency, started 13 games for the Commanders last season. He's getting involved in the mix. Justin Sternod, who's been a core special teams guy for them. Obviously, I mean, outside of Tremont Smith, he was their second best special teams guy in terms of how he graded out last season. And then you have Lavelle Bailey, the undrafted rookie free agent out of Fresno State. He's athletic. He's I'd say lean, he's smart and instinctive from what I've been able to see so far. But then again, like I'm basing this off of one practice that I've seen. So this week, I'm going to keep an eye on the inside linebackers a little bit more. I'm going to keep an eye on the tight ends a little bit more as well as we go about. But I, I think that Denver right now, if they continue to go, let's just say worst case scenario. Okay. Let's say that, you know, you have your linebacker group stay as is. Okay. It's Alex Singleton. Let's say Jonas Griffiths is a start at the Mike backer position. And then you have Cody Barton and you have Justin Sternot. And then Lavelle Bailey is going to be the other guy that's going to play a lot of special teams this year. Maybe you can bring him onto the practice squad. You have guys, in my opinion, solid depth, developmental talent, right? And I think you're in a good spot. I think Justin Sternot has been in a position for years where, look, he's been playing primarily special teams. I think it was in 2021 or maybe 2022 where he did play some linebacker, but it's a small sample size. Justin's a smart dude. He understands the defense. He, you know, He's in a good position. He's contributing as a core four guy. I think this could be a year where maybe you do see a guy like Justin Sternod maybe throw his name into the hat a little bit more to be considered more serious in terms of being a potential starter here. Now, look, I think everyone looks at the lack of experience in terms of being a starter there at the linebacker position for him. They're like, well, I just don't see it, especially when you have a guy like Cody Barton who started all these games in his career in the NFL. That's a great point there. But it's about who gives you the best chance, right? And I would say for Broncos fans, don't discount Justin Sternod. There's a reason they brought him back. There's a reason he wanted to re-sign despite the opportunity. He could have reunited with Ejiro Everell. I guarantee you in Carolina, he might have actually had a chance to play a little bit more than maybe he has in Denver, but he's a guy who's you know a name that I think Broncos fans need to pay attention to. You can't ignore Justin Sternod. I think there's good competition right there. And if, look, there's an injury to an Alex Singleton that's obviously going to be a blow. If there's an injury to like, you know, a Jonas Griffith, like, okay, you're going to have a guy like Cody Barton. I think that's where a veteran guy like that's going to be beneficial. You have guys that can step up and start if need be. But then on the back end, you also have Sternod, who's been a developmental piece. Lavelle Bailey, who the Broncos built very, very highly in terms of his athletic makeup. So that's my thoughts on the linebacker position. Now to get to the tight end position here for Broncos country, let's take a look at what that looks like right now. I mean, I think obviously with Greg Dulcich, we expect him to return at some point. There is a chance he could return to practice this week. We'll keep our eye on that. But he is expected to be back on the practice field before training camp, according to what Sean Payton told us last week. Right now, it seems like the Broncos' top two options in terms of their depth chart at the tight end position, it is Lucas Kroll, and I think he's clear-cut right now, the number one guy getting reps ahead of Adam Troutman. And then you have Adam Troutman, who started a majority of the games last season for Denver and really in training camp was their number one guy was working with the first team every single day in comparison to Dulcich, who Dulcich last year was working with the second and the third team. Oh, during the training camp portion, he got some reps with the first team, but it was primarily Adam Troutman's job from the onset there. So I think those are going to be your two guys that you have leading the room between Kroll and Troutman. And then we saw obviously Nate Adkins who made the roster as an undrafted rookie free agent last year. And then there's Thomas Yasmin who's got the roster exemption as an international player. So it allows the Broncos to have him on. They got 91 guys right now with him, but he doesn't count against it because of that exemption that the NFL granted. The Broncos have an opportunity to, you know, to kind of have him maneuver with him. He's a developmental prospect and obviously has some athletic traits to him. We'll see how things go there. I, I don't think that the Broncos will be adding anybody to that room right now. And, you know, I think you have to keep an eye on the injury situation. If there's an injury that pops up, obviously there's going to be a list of names that Denver looks at, you know, that were maybe there for a rookie mini camp tryouts, or maybe there's a veteran out there they could bring in in that case. But I think Denver right now, they are content with the room that they have. And I think they're going to stick with that. I think at least going through training camp. So something to see right now as we approach week two, of organized team activities. But one thing we are going to dive deep into, one of our good listeners of the show, Ed Helinski, sent me a question. He said, hey, Cody, what's the vibe on the Broncos roster at practice? I'm going to tell you why I think the vibes right now about the roster and overall vibe inside the team facility is in a much better spot right now than it was last year. I'm going to tell you that here on today's brand new episode, Locked on Broncos. 
Today's Locked On Broncos podcast is brought to you by our friends over there at the Game Time app. And Game Time makes getting tickets to the NBA Finals even faster and easier. And prices on the Game Time app, they actually go down the closer that it gets to tip off with killer last minute deals, all in prices, views from your seat, and their lowest price guarantee. Game Time takes the guesswork out of buying NBA tickets. They also take the guesswork out of buying tickets for the NFL season, especially the Broncos home opener in week two against Russell Wilson and the Pittsburgh Steelers. Game time has exclusive deals that you can get in as maybe it gets a little bit closer to kickoff, or if you want to secure them ahead of time, they have that right there inside the game time app. And the one thing I like about using the game time app, not only do I get great last minute deals where I can save up to 60% off buying last minute for sports, concerts, comedy theater, and other events that are going on near me. I also like that they have all in pricing, which shows me my total upfront. So I'm not left with any surprise fees at checkout. So take the guesswork out of buying NBA finals tickets with game time, download the game time app, create an account and use code locked on NFL for $20 off your first purchase terms apply again create an account redeem code locked on nfl for 20 dollars off your first purchase download game time today last minute tickets lowest price guaranteed as we jump into the fourth quarter action on today's episode locked on broncos real quick want to say thank you once again to everybody in broncos country for tuning in making us your first listen of the day every single day we appreciate all you every dayers out there in broncos countries the team prepares for week two of organized team activities. We're continuing to recap what's been going on, obviously, through the first week of OTAs last week. Week two of OTAs is here. What storylines are going to come about practice? Well, make sure you stay tuned here to Locked On Broncos so you know exactly what's going on. I'm at practice every single day for the Broncos in season right now. Just a reminder for anybody that's just now tuning in, we are granted right now, media is only granted one out of the three days at OTAs. We'll be granted all three days of mandatory mini camp in June, and then we're going to be there every day for training camp and then every day in the regular season. And I'll come back here, share my thoughts and my observations with everybody here in Broncos country alongside my co-host, Sarah Bettinger. So with that said, uh, Ed Helinski, one of the avid listeners, viewers of the show, has very, been very, very supportive of Lockdown Broncos since the onset, sent in a mailbag question, and he asked me the vibe. He said, Cody, what's the vibe on the Broncos roster at practice you know, where's the pulse at right now? What was the energy like? And and I would just say from my observation last week at practice, it was just so different than I think OTAs last year when we saw Russell Wilson as the team's quarterback. Because I think so much of us, we were wondering, there was a little bit of a mysterious vibe to the team. What's the dynamic between Russ and Sean going to look like? And look, there were a lot of praises at OTA so far, but then there was the the hot commentary by Sean Payton about Nathaniel Hackett, what had happened last year in terms of, or in 2022 when Hackett was the head coach and what Russell Wilson was able to do behind the scenes with, you know, his staff and team. Like, like it was just chaos from what things had initially been like going into it. Sean came in all buttoned up with the suit, right. And in his introductory press conference and said, you know, none of that, you know, stuff that happened here last year is not going to happen here in this building this year. And very much so that was the case. Sean was very much in control and Sean is very much in control of the operation that's going on in Dove Valley right now. And and look, I think as a head coach, you want to be able to have that. Now, for us at times as media members, it's a little frustrating, right? Because, you know, our, our job is to ask questions. Our job is to observe and to report on the things that we're seeing. And sometimes we're a little bit limited on what we can say and like what we can report on. And obviously, like there's provisions there, but there's not much we can do in that regard. Like we're allowed to say certain things, but we're not allowed to really say, okay, this person's working with the first team. Oh, this person's working with the second team. Oh. Because in the eyes of the National Football League and the Broncos, it's, hey, don't give away anything that can maybe give us, you know, give away our competitive advantage, you know, against an opponent, something along those lines. So, you know, we just try to go based on, okay, what are the vibes? Who are the players that looked well? Like, what was the overall theme at practice? And I'd say, like, last week at Thursday, just being there and observing the roster, you see it from team stretch. You know, it's just they they do the same team stretch they did last year. But, you know, it was just a little bit more of a relaxed vibe at practice. Like things didn't seem uptight. Like I would say last year in the regular season from start to finish, really, there was just this uptight vibe. Like guys were walking on eggshells a little bit out there. And it just seemed different here this, you know, past week at practice. We'll obviously see what it's like this week as well. But it just seemed that the roster, everyone that's out there, it's more laid back. And, and I don't feel like guys are walking on eggshells at this point. And when you look at it as well, it's, okay, where does it start? Like, where do you look first to really get a vibe on where the roster is? I look at the quarterback position, right? Okay, you got three guys in there that are, right now there's a build quarterback competition between Bo Nix, Jarrett Stidham, and Zach Wilson. I have my thoughts. I think you're going to see it build as a competition. 
but I don't really think there's competition for the starting job. I think Sean Payton's intent is to go into this season with Bo Nix as his starter, and then you're going to see Zach Wilson and Jarrett Stidham really compete for that backup job behind him. I really think that's going to be the formula in terms of what we see here. And then maybe there's a chance the Broncos bring Ben DiNucci back to the practice squad after the uh, after the training camp, after preseason. They could even do it earlier, depending on roster moves. But Sean wants to get these guys reps. And I would just say, like, just looking at these three quarterbacks, they're relaxed as well. Like, Bo Nix looks like he's been doing it for a while. You know, he, when he gets the reps, he's under center. He looks comfortable. He, he doesn't need a lot of instruction. Like, he's leading the way. Same thing with Jarrett. Same thing with Zach. Like, I think the quarterbacks are doing a really good job of kind of just setting the example. Like, everyone's going to be focused on this quarterback competition all summer, but there's going to be so much competition across the board. Really good competition, might I add, in terms of what you're going to see at various skill player positions on the offensive line, the defensive back room. Like, you're going to see so much, and everyone's going to be talking about quarterback. We'll obviously highlight the quarterback position, but we're going to be highlighting every training camp battle that we see as well and how things are going. You're going to get that coverage here locked on Broncos. You're not going to be able to get that consistently anywhere else. But overall, just players are laid back. It seems like they're focused, and they're also it looks like they're having fun out there. Like you know, and I think some people are going to hear you like, "Oh, uh, they shouldn't be having fun. They've had eight losing seasons in a row." It's not necessarily about that. If you ever played football, you've ever been around the sport. What happened last year is, is dead and gone. Like you can't just keep focusing on what happened last year. Like as much as it's applicable to the fan base, the last eight years don't matter to what has happened with the Broncos, right? Because the team right now, this current roster as it's assembled, the current regime. They're only focused on right now, and they're focused on this year. They don't care about last year. They're not focused on what happened two years ago. They're not focused on what happened seven or eight years ago. It is a different vibe, and I think you have to approach it like that because I can just tell you this as a coach, having coached a long time, having played a long time, the number one thing you don't want to do is focus on the past. Now, unless you've had a lot of success, right, and I think we've seen it with Sean. There's times where Sean will rave and talk about when, like, when they won in New Orleans. That's a good place, right? That keeps you level-headed. It keeps you balanced as to like, okay, hey, it's not easy right now, but there are good things about what we're doing as coaches. And you want to relate to that on some level. You want to maybe be able to share like, I know what this is like because I've experienced it before. I, I think when you look at where this roster is at, they're moving forward. They're focused on forward. They're not worried about last year. Bo Nix, Jarrett Stidham, Zach Wilson, they're not worried about what happened last year. Jarrett's not worried about the last two starts that he had. He's not worried really about this quarterback competition. He's just trying to go out there and compete to try to win the job. Zach Wilson is no longer worried about the New York Jets and what happened during his time there. Bo Nix, he's focused on what do I need to do? Like the Broncos drafted me so high, I have these expectations on me. How can I go out there and be the best quarterback that I can possibly be, be the best teammate that I can possibly be? All these guys are doing a great job of leading by example. And I think you're seeing that from the rest of the roster. You got guys like Tim Patrick leading the wide receiver room. You got Pat Sertan leading the Broncos defensive back room. Alex Singleton's leading the linebacker room. You got Malcolm Roach and other guys leading the defensive line room. It, it's a good spot right now for Denver to be in. And look, I, I think you want to be able to see this. Okay. Like the vibes aren't always going to be good. Like, if the Broncos are struggling, let's say they go on a two-game losing streak at some point in the regular season, you don't want to lose the, you know, the the sight on what got you, you know, there. Like you got to enjoy the process because it is a marathon, not a sprint, especially when we're talking about you're gonna have 17 games, but you're gonna have 18 weeks in the regular season. And eventually you're gonna have 18 games in the regular season. The NFL is moving toward that. But it's about being able to just be present in the moment and focus on it. Not worried about last week. Not worried about a week ahead. We're just focused on now. And it seems like that is much of the message that is going all throughout the entire roster right now at Broncos OTAs. Will it maintain that way? Obviously, that's something we're going to continue to monitor here on Locked on Broncos. But with that said, Broncos country, that'll wrap up today's episode of the show. I appreciate you so much for tuning in and staying locked into Locked on Broncos. You can get us wherever you get your podcasts or you can watch us on YouTube. I'll be back tomorrow with another episode of the show. What are we looking for here? What are some of the three biggest storylines for Broncos OTAs going into week two? You're going to get that and much more on tomorrow's brand new episode of the show. We'll see you then.